Member for Greensland. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Our nation's cities are indeed at a crossroad. Poised for rapid population growth in coming decades, our four largest capitals, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane and Perth, will increase their population by 46 per cent. Adelaide, Canberra, Hobart and Darwin will increase their population by nearly 30 per cent by 2031. We know that Australia's transition to a knowledge-intensive economy has seen jobs uh, be based in the CBDs of our cities in terms of their growth. What that has meant is that it's harder for key workers, single-person households and families on low and middle incomes to find homes close to work, resulting in drive-in, drive-out suburbs in nearly all our capital cities. And Infrastructure Australia has told us that urban congestion will cost $53 billion in lost productivity by 2031 if left unaddressed. That's why we need leadership from government to deal with these pressing challenges, to improve public transport, to make sure that jobs are created close to where people live. But this is a government that isn't matching its rhetoric with reality. They say they understand the importance of infrastructure investment, yet the budget cuts it by $1.6 billion in this financial year alone, with investment to fall off a cliff over the next four years, from a projected $9.2 billion this year in the government's own projections, down to $4.2 billion in 2020 21. It's the same with public transport. Malcolm Turnbull likes taking selfies on trains, trams and buses. He just won't fund them with any new investment. The fact is that this year's budget doesn't have a single dollar of new investment for urban public transport. No investment in the Cross River Rail project in Brisbane, Adelaide's Adelink, Western Sydney Rail or the Melbourne Metro. Indeed, Victoria's infrastructure investment program will receive no new money from the Commonwealth over the forwards, despite making up 25 per cent of the nation's population. The budget papers themselves show zero, 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 zero. This is a government that has contempt for Victorians, as exemplified by its approach to Victorian infrastructure. In addition, there's been a big deal made about the so-called City Deals program, but there isn't a single dollar in the 2017 budget to make this a reality. The City Deals so far are deals in Townsville and Launceston, simply an attempt to dress up belated matching of ALP commitments to the Townsville Stadium and the University of Tasmania. And in Western Sydney, the government is trying to retrofit an election announcement with substance that doesn't exist and no clear funding to actually get there. The city of Blacktown has actually been excluded from this city deals process, even though they will grow by 200,000 additional people from 2011 to 2036. City deals, when done right, provide an opportunity, in particular local government, to work together with other levels and encourage the economic growth of a region. This government is not doing that. They've established this absurd infrastructure financing unit in the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. This is a solution looking for a problem. There is no lack of financing from the private sector or from superannuation funds for good infrastructure projects. There's certainly no lack of innovative financing, which is how projects like the Gold Coast Light Rail project was funded with support from Infrastructure Australia. This sidelines Infrastructure Australia from the process and completely, completely creates this bureaucracy whereby the private sector are wondering what it will do. According to Infrastructure Partnerships Australia, uh, they said this, the budget confirms the cut to real budgeted capital funding to its lowest level in more than a decade, using a mix of underspend, reprofiling and narrative to cover this substantial drop in real capital expenditure. The fact is that this government has abandoned cities at a time where they require leadership and investment from the Commonwealth 
to ensure their ongoing productivity, sustainability and liveability. This budget means it's a lost opportunity because the coalition government simply aren't up to the task of providing leadership for this century.